Hello and welcome. I am Patricia Baby Amawa. Black History Month is about celebrating the enormous contributions that people of African descent have made and continue to make in all sectors of society. It is time to reflect on the past in order to shape the future. Today, we're focusing on an important part of black history in Canadian history, the story of Chloe Cooley, which has been produced by Historical Canada into a minute. Historical Canada has been honoring notable and moments in Canadian history through the Heritage Minutes for over 30 years. The bilingual 60-second short films each depict significant persons, events, or story in Canadian history. Canadians often actually take pride in the story of the Underground Railroad, a network of abolitionists who actually assisted thousands of escaped slaves from the United States to Canada to gain their freedom. Little is known of the dark history of slavery in this country. A new Heritage Minute shines more light on this. It features the life, legacy, and powerful resistance of Chloe Cooley. I'm going to speak to the amazing team involved in the production of this historical minute. But before then, let's hear some remarks from the President and Chief Executive Officer of Historical Canada, Anthony Wilson-Smith, and Moses A. Mawa. President and CEO of Afro Global Television and Silver Trust Media. I'm Anthony Wilson Smith, President and CEO of Historic Canada, the maker of Heritage Minutes. You know, Canada's history belongs to everyone and it has both heroes and villains. The heroes aren't always people that we hear that much about. One of those is Chloe Cooley, who through her courage and conviction and actions changed the future of Canada to make it a better, fairer place. Her story is an important one that needs to be told, and it needed to be told by the right people. In this case, that includes Alison Duke and Gaddy Conte George of Oya Productions, the historian Natasha Henry, and actress Oliva Barrett. We thank them for their engagement and their commitment to the story, and we thank you for watching. Please do appreciate, and let's all think more about our history. On behalf of Afro Global Television, Silver Trust Media, and the Transformation Institute, I'd like to thank Historica Canada for commemorating the contributions of people of African descent to Canadian history. Since 2016, the Afro Global Television channel has been a proud broadcast partner of Historica Canada's Heritage Minutes to Canadians and others beyond. Today, our focus is on Chloe Cooley, whose story encapsulates the resilience of our ancestors and inspires our present and future generations. Many thanks to Alison Duke and Gadi Conte George of Oya Media as well as all the other people who participated in the creation of this luminous heritage masterpiece. We look forward to the telecast of the Chloe Cooley interstitial on the Afro Global Television channel. Afro Global Television is a global super channel that transforms the destiny of people of African descent through programming that informs, empowers, entertains, and uplifts. The mission of Afro Global is to showcase the best of Africa and the diaspora. Global Television on Rogers Cable, Bell 5, TELUS and Eastlink. A new historical minute is about enslaved women in Upper Canada, her resistance against her owner, Sergeant Adam Vrooman, which precipitated the act to limit slavery in Upper Canada in 1973 the first legislation in the British colony to restrict the slave trade. Now, I'll be joined by the amazing team that worked on the project shortly, but before then, here is Historical Canada's Minute on Chloe Coley. And note that the French version of the voiceover was done by the Right Honourable Michel Jean, former Governor General of Canada, while the English voiceover was done by the Honourable Dr. Jean Augustine the first black woman elected to the Parliament of Canada and former cabinet minister. I don't care what the law is. I will never be a slave. 
That word, I hate it. It rests on my tongue like rot. Peter, how does it feel to get paid for your work? There are rumors freedom's coming for us all. Freedom, you know that's all I want. Chloe, careful. Vrooman would rather sell you across the river to America than let you go free. Then I'll run. I've run before. Maybe this time for good. No! No! Just get her into the boat! No! Chloe! Chloe, no! Word of Chloe Cooley's resistance led to Canada's first legislation limiting slavery. After 200 years, slavery was abolished in Canada in 1834. Our focus today is on the Historical Canada's Heritage Minute on Chloe Cooley. Right now, I'm being joined by the brilliant team that worked on the project. I'm excited to chat with them, but first let me introduce them. We have educator and historian who is a script consultant for the project, Natasha Henry. Next is co-founder of Oya Media Group, Canadian Screen Award winning multifaceted director, producer and writer who is a story editor and director of Chloe Cooley's Heritage Minute. It is my pleasure to welcome Alison Duke. We also have co-founder of Oya Media Group and two-time Canadian Screen Award winning filmmaker, Gadi Conte George. Now the star of the production, a woman that had big shoes to fill, is a very seasoned actor whom you may have seen in Designated Survivor, Spinning Out and Rookie Blue, just to name a few. The lead actress in Chloe Cooley's Heritage Minute, Olivia Barrett, is here. I would like to begin by actually asking you all how it feels like to be part of this amazing project. I'll start with you, Alison. It was such a, I guess, emotionally moving experience for me as a director. Um, I've been making films for 20 years. And when the project came to us, I was so, I was flabbergasted because I didn't know this history. And um, for someone who was born in Canada, whose family immigrated from the Caribbean and coming here and being here all this time and not knowing that there was slavery in Canada in this manner, um, you know, it was shocking. So I was really um, humbled by the opportunity and I just really wanted to try my very best to represent Chloe. Natasha? Working on this project has, uh, it really is kind of full circle. Um, for someone who's born and raised here and wanted to learn more about Black history, which led me to the work that I do, and now to be in this position where I am part of uh, amazing projects that help to share more about Black history, including the history of those that were enslaved like Kobe Cooley, for me is, um, is really uh, quite exciting and, and humbling as well. Gadi? I grew up with Heritage Minutes. You know, there's so many that I remember from childhood that I loved. Um, so it's just such an honor to be able to say I produced one, you know. And so it was, you know, an easy, an easy ask. I mean, I think it's something that um, any filmmaker in Canada would love to to do because it's such um, in, it's so ingrained in, um, you know, in Canadian culture. And Olivia, how does it feel like to be? the actress, the main actress, playing Chloe Cooley in this project? Getting the call was, it was on my birthday. Um, just wanted to share that. <laughs> Such a flood of emotions, just honor, privilege. Um, just the thought that, I mean, you know, I've acted in shows where I was a character, but this is, was a real woman and telling her story was one to me that like I took very seriously um, and I, I was elated. And, you know, throughout the audition process, I. All I thought about was I, I just want this role because it is the most um, important role I've ever had, I feel, in my life and will ever have because this was a woman who lived and her story was real and her impact was real. So it was an honor and a privilege and I was jumping through the roof. <laughs> wow. Very little is known about slavery in Canada. Uh, Natasha, can you tell us a little bit about enslavement in Canada? wherever these European empires were, as we know, many um, 
instituted uh, the enslavement of, of indigenous Africans and in, indigenous people in the Americas. And so Canada, what we now know as Canada was no exception. Um, the French who were the first uh, European colonizers, um, they enslaved um, primarily two thirds were uh, indigenous people who were enslaved and African people made up about one third of those who were enslaved. Um, up until about 17, the 1760s, 1770s. The first African person who was uh, recorded as being an enslaved person was a young boy who was given the name Olivier Lejeune, and that was in 1628. And then when the British um, gained control after they uh, defeated the French in the Seven Years' War, 17. 60 and their treaty in 1763, then um, these colonies that were Canada, that became Canada, uh, became under the British control. And under the British, we saw an increase of um, enslaved Africans. And so those who were enslaved were primarily uh, African people who were brought uh, from the United States. Uh, some, especially in the Maritimes, uh, were also coming from uh, the Caribbean. And so over the course of our history, slavery has been practiced for 206 years. It was instituted, it was common, um, and it was adaptable. And so in whichever way our colonies grew, um, slave labor was, was part of that. Uh, and so it's not something that is, has been treated as, um, as an integral part, as a common part of the, uh, of the development of uh, colonial Canada, but it was. And, and then we have, um, you know, some of the stories that we know, but there's so much more that we don't know that we continue to, to uncover. Thank you, Natasha. You know, it is interesting that you actually have thrown more light on this because many people think that slavery did not exist in Canada, um, but it did exist. And I'm glad that we're, you know, talking about it and going back to see this dark part of our history so that we can actually, you know, move forward in a way that um, stands for freedom, equity, and peace. Now, um, Gadi, uh, who is Chloe Cooley and why is her story so unique? I think her, her story is unique because it's documented. And I think number one, um, the, 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 I think the lack of um, details that um, exist for a lot of experiences for a lot of enslaved people in Canada, we don't have those stories in abundance like um, our neighbors south of the border. Um, and, and also I think her story is really unique because of its connection to the unraveling of of the laws in Canada and how impact how it impacted that. I, um, I think um, that's what also makes it um, truly unique. Okay, Natasha, I'll trade back to you as a historian. Tell us a little bit more about the story of Chloe Cooley. Along the Niagara River, there was a heavy concentration of people who of enslaved um, black people who were brought in by the United Empire Loyalists. Um, what we know of her is that she was initially um, enslaved by a gentleman by the name of Benjamin Hardison, who would become one of the first politicians in the legislature of the province in Fort Erie. And then he sold her to Adam Ruman. Um, Adam Ruman had decided that he was going to sell her into Ni New York across the Niagara River. Perhaps because of their history, he decided to use a couple of other men to forcefully bound her, <clears throat> put her in the boat to sell her across. Um, there were two gentlemen who were working there, um, a white man by the name of William Grizzly and a black man who was a black loyalist, formerly enslaved in the, um, and he was formerly enslaved and served in the military, Peter Martin. And they reported the incident to the, um, the, the politicians, the executive council as to what happened. Um, and so they, charges were drawn up against her enslaver Adam Bruman, but the charges were not in regards to him manhandling her or how he treated her. The charges were for disturbing the peace because he was well within his rights legally to do as he chose with what we were would call his property, right? Um, and and so the the um, attorney general John White uh, used this incident to introduce legislation to abolish slavery. And what we learn again from the records is that 
um, people who held slaves as well as those who were enslaved were talking about abolition possibly coming. So many like Vrooman were trying to liquidate their assets, if you will, in New York, trying not to take a financial loss if slavery was being abolished. And those who were being, who were enslaved were speaking about, you know, freedom potentially coming. Anyhow, so for him to introduce this legislation, he received pushback from his fellow politicians because almost half of them themselves held property in slaves and did not want slavery to be abolished. And so the compromise essentially was that slavery would be a gradually abolished over uh, three generations, so almost a 30 year period. Um, and, and so her, you know, just that little bit of what we know about her um, experience is one of many. It's, it's unique, but it also is indicative of some of the experiences of um, those who were enslaved here. Olivia, this is not an easy story to depict because Chloe Cooley's um, resistance was traumatic. Um, what kind of place did you have to go to and what did it take for you to prepare for this role? I definitely went on some deep, deep dives uh, because again, previous to this, I'd never heard of Chloe Cooley. I'd never heard of these stories. And similar to what uh, Gardi was saying, you know, the documentation hasn't been there, but this was documented and it is just such a shame that we didn't know about it, but we are going to know about it now. Um, you know, it, it, it's really kind of, um, you know, interesting in the sense that this story was so many years ago, but I mean, as a Black woman, that is how I identify, we still deal with trauma in our own ways. And getting prepared for this role, you know, it really brought me to a very just obviously dark place in the sense that, wow, like, just knowing that your body was not yours, that you yourself were a piece of property uh, was very just traumatizing. Um, but, you know, really just knowing that still to this day, we still have to fight, we still have to make noise. And that kind of translated into, you know, um, this role, but also uh, the power of who Chloe was. You know, when I was preparing even for the audition, you know, I, I, I didn't want to completely attribute all that was taken from her, but really bring to light also the power that she had, because it it would have been scary, obviously, at that time to do what she did. And even in reading the information that I received, like, I mean, she did little things, right? Like she took food, right, from her, from her master, right? Like she did things to show that, you know what, like, I, I'm worth something, I'm valuable. Um, so, you know, those are all the things that I kind of put into preparing for the role, practicing and just, you know, doing the auditions and all that stuff with the team was just great and valuable. But, you know, and I want to thank the team because they did provide an individual there to uh, allow me to speak about the the feeling uh, because, you know, you're, you're playing the role and you don't really think about it. And after we kind of wrapped a scene, like it really did hit me and it was very emotional. So, you know, Chloe's legacy lives on and her power is within all of us. And uh, that that's that's really what was ingrained in me. And yeah, I'm just again, every day I, I feel I live Chloe. <laughs> well done. I, I like that you say that. And, you know, as black women, um, I think we should own, you know, our strength and not shrink um, or, or play small or, or try to disappear because our voice um, leads to change, as we see in the case of Chloe Cooley. Alison, uh, the, the story of Chloe Cooley is a sensitive one and compressing it to one minute even makes it harder to portray. How was it like, you know, bringing the story to life? I just remember that when I received the script and the script was really well written, I, I started thinking about, actually, I just felt like Chloe was there on the page, you know, speaking to me and say, do this, do that, add this. Um, I felt from the very beginning that Chloe wanted to be heard. And it's so funny. It's such a metaphor that her screams was the thing that, you know, triggered the le um, legislation to be changed, even if it's it just a minute on a minute level. Um, and it took 40 years for things to actually uh, change in that regard. Um, her, her, her screams was what made a change, made a difference. Um, and um, so I was just, with with the script, I just really wanted to um, bring that out, set it up a little bit so that we understood that we can never, ever say again that it was in slavery in Canada because her screams are there. And I wanted to make sure that everybody heard her screams and how um, 
courageous she was. Her screams and her pleads for, for, for them to stop was not, um, it, was a, it, was, it came from strength. It didn't come from weakness. And so I wanted to add that as well to, to, the, to the story. And just working with Olivia and the team and, the, and, the, and Gaddy, um, it was just great. Uh, Olivia brought so much energy and so much uh, passion, um, but she also brought the strength in her eyes and her movement, which I just thought was, yes, you know, she's just totally embodying uh, and, and embracing the story. And, um, and it just made my, my job very easy, actually. But I think Chloe was there with us all the way, for sure. She was definitely there and she still is with us. A couple of years ago, there was a historical minute on Viola Desmond, another powerful black woman. And now we have this historical minute on Chloe Cooley. Uh, Natasha, why is it important for the stories to be told? Had this been, uh, uh, you know, just a, a few years prior, you know, we would have been in the same circumstance as Chloe Cooley, as Harriet Tubman. Um, and to think about what the, the little things that these women did that allows us to be the women that we are today. And so I always feel so connected to, to these stories because put them all together, they are part of us. And they have kind of, right, they paved, helped to pave the way for us to be, um, you know, the women that we are. Had Chloe Cooley not screamed, had that legislation not changed over 40 years, had, you know, had slavery not been abolished, um, you know, thinking about the decisions some of our parents made to come to Canada, to come to Ontario. So all of these things are connected uh, and part of that historical story. Um, and so for us now to be in the space to speak about it, to share this exciting new story is really powerful and significant. And it also then charges us to continue to create a path for young, for young Black women um, as well as we continue in the work that we do. So it also charges us with a responsibility to carry that work. And so to be among you all, you know, with you know, powerful platforms, talented women, I mean, we're all doing our work in different ways and we're all, you know, contributing to that goal. Gadi, um, I'd like to find out how the production team worked with Historica Canada. How was it like, you know, doing this project with Historica Canada? It's a great partnership. I mean, they have all their consultants like Natasha um, Henry and um, uh, the, the whole team of consultants um, for us to always bounce questions off or anything, any any details that we need an answers on, um, you know, because we are not... Um, the the historical experts so and um it was really important that the minute stays true to every historical detail down to the way you know chloe's hair or you know head wrapping was done the way her shirt was tied the button you know every fine detail had to have be a, a addressed and so um it was uh you know a lot of back and forth for you know us our creative ideas um, and, you know, bringing the visuals to life um, and then making sure that we're staying true to the historical accuracy, um, you know, but then also I think, um, you know, us, you know, being black creators and a, and a, and a black production company, um, you know, making sure that our voices are heard and our perspectives and, um, you know, listening to our the, the nuances that we, we would bring to the table in order to bring the story alive. alive. Um, I, I thought it was, um, you know, just wonderful working with them. You know, we were heard and um, we were able to, to contribute meaningfully to, to make the, the minute what it is today. That's great. In the days of Chloe Cooley, Harriet Tubman, Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King Jr., and other civil rights leaders, resistance looked different than what it is today. However, one thing is common, and that is the fact that resistance leads to change. Now, today we have a different kind of movement that focuses on issues and not driven by a notable figure like in the past. We have the Black Lives Matter movement, the Me Too movement, and others. Now, what have you to say about what resistance looks like today? And the fact that we also have the tool, um, social media, uh, to help us actually proliferate our message. What a question. Um, uh, well, you know what? This morning, I could just start where, where I am. 
Um, this morning, I, when I was thinking about uh, Chloe again, because she seems to be with me and I'll have her walk with her for the rest of my life, I believe. Um, I was thinking about Rodney King, the screams of Rodney King. And I was saying that in my mind that Chloe Cooley's um, screams um, were heard um, back then. And that's what led to change. Rodney King's screams were vi videotaped and put and spread on social media. So I think there's an element of social media with these new movements like Black Lives Matters, Me Too, that helps to amplify um, the issue in a different way. Um, we're, we're no longer saying, oh, that person here, unless it's a George Floyd situation, all that, like that person's the leader, but there is a, the, a total movement of thousands and maybe even um, hundreds of thousands or millions of people that believe in issues. And using social media is definitely, um, has changed activism for sure. Um, I don't know if it's the best way because I feel like when you have strong leaders like Martin Luther King, um, when you have uh, people like Rosa Parks, when you have uh, people who are great orators, who are um, educated, who can talk about the issues in, in meaningful ways uh, with nuance, um, either from lived experience or from a collective um, um, experience um, of hearing other people's stories. I think that's, that's really powerful. And um, I, I'll be really interested in what Natasha has to say about this because um, even with these movements, sometimes there's backlash, right? You know, Me Too gets lots of backlash. You know, backlash uh, Black Lives Matter gets lots of black, um, you know, backlashes. And I feel like sometimes it's like you don't know who to point to, to go to for, you know, please talk for us. Please talk for the community. Please, you know, um, you know, someone to stand up and say something that we can all agree on, or at least 50% of us, if we look at Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. <laughs> Natasha? Um, well, I think it's, it's something that's longstanding as part of movements. And um, because they're so orga organic, it, you know, it's not easy to, um, to dictate what's going to happen next and who's going to play this role or whatnot. Things happen organically and things are complex. And then we have um, personalities and ideological beliefs that are at play at well. So all of these things come together. And so um, we've gone from the newspaper, Marianne Shad Carey and the Bibbs publishing newspapers. We know Black papers were so strong going into the 20th century, building organizations in the early to right up until, you know, going into the 20th century. And now, as you said, social media um, where people are kind of organizing and congregating on these different platforms. So things in that sense have kind of changed in, in, in the platform. Um, and even, you know, thinking about the kind, again, just thinking about the kinds of work that we do and how these are, are still forms of resistance and documenting Black history and Black stories in different ways. So we have to look at, you know, you know what is that resistance? It's, it's not just... Um, or only taking to the streets. It's not just, you know, on, on social media, but there are a lot of different kinds of steps that people take. And we will probably not even understand the impact of what's been done more recently until further along in this, the history. I don't think Chloe understood or knew that her scream would lead to, you know, and contribute to what it did. And while it may have been futile for her as an individual in her circumstances that it reaped benefit for you know for people to come at, uh, ahead of her so um so uh, you know so it's it's just such again such a fascinating history to kind of unpack especially in the canadian context olivia i think the one thing with regards to resistance then and resistance now i mean i think the one thing that stands out to me um is just that i feel like every step of the way there and I, I always go back to this power is that we have always and as Natasha was saying I don't I mean Chloe I'm sure couldn't know the impact it would have and here I am in 2022 right we being able to tell her story uh through the eyes of this wonderful team 
this was then and this is now and we're still going and we're still fighting um so i just think where resistance is concerned especially where we are we're always leading you know and even with this chloe cooley story as i learned more this woman led and things happened after right and even harriet tubman and you know just wondering like because of her resistance, is that why even more people decided to come north? So we are just always leading, always, and our voice just needs to continue, right? Because the justice is, it is an ongoing, ongoing task. Gadi, what about you? Resistance, um, it, it, it has to exist. I think it's, it's something that um, has to exist and it comes in, in different forms and the forms change with what, what the times call for. Um, and right now the times are digital, the times are social media. I'm curious to see what, what resistance will look like 10 years from now, um, 20 years from now, as we enter in, you know, a m- more digital spaces with the metaverse and, um, and communication changes, um, you know, and, and a lot of us um, are in more comfortable places where it's not a matter of life and death. It's a matter of comfort. Mm-hmm. And so whether people now will, will choose to be uncomfortable, will choose to um, put themselves at risk, um, where before there was no option. You know, they, you, you wanted to vote, you wanted to be free, you wanted to live. Now um, it, it might be for, for different reasons. Some people, um, you know, in fi- certain financial places they are in life, they can live comfortable lives without having to 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 have any kind of resistance. So I feel like now um, it's 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 almost more optional, um, and and so um, it can it it looks different in different levels. And so uh, yeah, I'm just I'm curious to see what resistance looks like as we move forward um, with technology. Olivia did mention earlier about the power of uh, Chloe Cooley and the fact that that power lives in us as black women. I must agree. But, you know, the thing about the strength and the power that we actually exhibit is that it's often being used against us and to label us. Um, And I must say that um, if you look at society, um, we are almost at the bottom when it comes to marginalization and inequality. Um, and uh, the strength that we have is one thing that has actually helped us, you know, to still stand tall. Um, I'd like each and every one of you to make a comment about this. What do you think about how our strength and power has become an object of ridicule and negative labeling? I believe that Black women are so misunderstood. Um, A lot of people still think that we're the help. Um, Even if we have, you know, a lot of expertise um, in our our field, even if we, you know, showcase Black excellence, um, people will still, you know, think that, you know, we are not as good as we are, or um, we can't be leaders. You know, you can't, you know, listen to this black woman, even though she is the, the boss. We, we, we are plagued with all of this in our, in our communities, in our society still. Um, it's tiring. I could talk about the film industry, you know, uh, where black women are the most marginalized, um, I think next to indigenous women in the Canadian film and television industry. Um, we have a very low percentage of uh, Black women in positions of power, in um, positions behind the, car- uh, behind the camera, uh, telling stories. And um, when we do get opportunities to tell our stories, um, we are second guessed every moment, every second along the way. We are underfinanced. Um, we, are, we are told to um, make work in a very fast way with incredibly short uh, deadlines. Um, Whereas our white male counterparts is totally different reality. Also black women, if you you, uh, do not succeed, if you um, have a a bad product or something doesn't turn out the way everybody expected, um, there's no second chances for you. Mm. You know, so um, 
in our industry, I see it a lot. And in society, it's, it's, you know, I see this across almost every industry. Yet, Black women are superstars. You know, we are out there, you know, doing our thing, excelling everywhere around the world um, in all industries. And that just says something about the strength of the Black woman. And I believe because of that, Black women need to be celebrated a lot more. It's exhausting to constantly be second-guessed um, from, from people all around you. It's, it's, um, it's, I think it's something that I think I discovered probably as a teenager for the first time of, of um, you know, speaking with confidence and that being... Um, uh, misinterpreted as anger or aggression. It's not my problem if other people can't see me for who I am and um, understand me for what I'm trying to communicate. Um, and their preconceived ideas and notions are, are come first and they see me as a Black woman and the stereotypes that go with that before they see me as a human. Um, and that's not my problem to solve. Um, and, and, or else I will just be exhausted trying to, to, to fix that problem, um, every step of the way with what I do. Um, and so for me, um, what that looks like is surrounding myself with people who, um, who see me, you know, and who truly see me and who allow me to bring my whole self without any kind of censorship. Um, and I think that's why, um, you know, I, Alice and I formed Oya Media Group and we do the work we do and we work with who we work with and we create the content that we create um, specifically to bring down these barriers and but also to protect ourselves so we don't have to be bombarded by what the industry, um, by the way the industry treats us. Natasha? Just one thing that came to mind is that Malcolm X said, you know, the black woman is the most disrespected woman in America, and I would expand that to say the Americas, if not, you know, the world. Um, there is a, there continues to be um, these historical, historically entrenched fears um, uh, of, of Black women, um, but also these, these pervasive ideas of who Black women are or should be, what people feel we should be. Um, but as we know, my goodness, the strength of, of, of Black women uh, throughout history, if we think about just our mothers and our aunts and our family, um, you know, never mind looking about what women are doing in different industries, the strength of Black women is phenomenal. And it has, um, I mean, we could talk about, you know, carrying the weight of, of families, of movements, um, of, of change. Women have, Black women have always led change in different spheres. Um, and so to come from such a, a lineage, just such an ancestry is so empowering. And, uh, you know, I think it's important for us to socialize young Black girls to embrace that, mm -hmm. to embrace your voice, to embrace who you are, because you will never fit what people want you to fit and so be who you are as God was saying right you just have to 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 to, em, to embrace that and not to as I say not to small up yourself you don't small up and shrink up yourself for people be big be loud be proud right and 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 and, and thinking about um where that strength comes from um, and the power of that. And so I, I think that um, it's not, again, it's for us to embrace all of that positivity, all of that strength, and to, to set aside all of that negativity and all of that confining of, of who we are and leave that to others to deal with. That's for them to deal with, not for, not for us, because we continue to shine and outshine and to do, um, and to do amazing things despite all of the, 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 the perceptions of Black women, despite a lot of the, you know, the structural barriers that we continue to, to make strides. We've always been made to feel like, you know, we, our passion is anger, um, our vibration is unruliness. And, you know, this whole experience, you know, just even going back to this one scene um, in the Chloe Cooley minute, where, you know, just even the thought, I mean, you know, I think about the fact that, you know, she hadn't actually run, but the thought 
her own thought couldn't even be her thought. And maybe she would have, maybe she wouldn't. But the, just the degradation of obviously her being property, her being a woman, and just how that was so violently taken from her. And that even now, although I'm so glad to hear that we can even speak this way, that we can even have this panel, but that as Black women, our narrative continues to be told by someone else. And, you know, as we saw the whole Green Party situation play out, I mean, you're just reading this stuff and saying to yourself, like, really, are we really are we really telling this narrative when we know it doesn't come from us? So like we've all said, it's exhausting to know that you have the talent, you have the qualifications, but every step of the way, this race, the black woman is constantly destroyed, which also brings me to the fact that it, without a doubt, we know it's because we, we do exude such power and people fear that, So, you know, but um, yeah, it's a, uh, it, it is exhausting, but I'm glad we're at this place. And again, being able to be led by this wonderful team to tell this story is, is, is just so empowering. Chloe Cooley is one woman that when I look at her story and what we as black women have gone through um, over the years and even up till today, I kind of see somebody who actually not only carried all of us on her shoulders, but is actually a representation of what we still go through and the fact that our voices have to be heard and we still have to uh, speak up and stand up and be strong for ourselves, our children, and our men. Now, um, I would like each and every one of you to say one word just tell me one word that best describes Chloe Cooley. What's it really just uh, bravery, badge, badge of bravery. Gadi? Strength, just strength. It's um, like there's no other way to show strength than what she did for us. Oh. Natasha? Hard to pick one word, but I would say determination. Um, she was determined um, no matter the circumstance for her. Um, and, and, and that really shines through. She was resilient in her resistance and her voice lives on. Wow, what a wonderful conversation this has been. Thank you so much, ladies. I feel so inspired, empowered, and I'm so proud of you all. Thank you, Gadi, Olivia, Natasha, and Alison. And I would like to thank Historica Canada for telling the story of Chloe Cooley, a powerful black woman. And I'd like to say to you out there, do not shrink, diminish, or put out your light to make others who are afraid of your strength feel better. Let's stand up, stand out, speak up against injustice, oppression, and the shackles of slavery and bondage that hold us mentally and physically and all round bound. Until next time, I am Patricia Baby Amawa. Do take care. God bless. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.